Lymphedema is a condition that affects thousands of individuals around the world. There are two main types of lymphedema, primary and secondary. My name is Kelly and I'm a physical therapist specializing in oncology, rehab, and lymphedema. And in this video, I'm gonna explain what primary and secondary lymphedema are, the differences between the two, and how they are best treated. Before we begin, make sure that you subscribe down below for weekly new videos. You can also join us on Instagram for more related content, and you can check out our website for more resources. So there are two general types of lymphedema, primary and secondary. Let's talk about each and the differences. Primary lymphedema is lymphedema that can occur from hereditary or genetic abnormalities that cause malformation or dysfunction of the lymphatic system. Primary lymphedema can impact any part of the body and often involves swelling in multiple or more than one limb or region of the body. Some of the most common diseases related to primary lymphedema are Milroy's disease, Park-Weber syndrome, and other arterial venous abnormalities or AV malformations. Primary lymphedema often appears during puberty, mostly in girls, and usually affects a lower extremity. However, it can also present later in life, typically after the age of 35, and can occur in both male and female adults. It can, however, be present at birth or in early infancy, which is called congenital lymphedema. Primary lymphedema is diagnosed by a doctor or a medical provider through clinical evaluation and imaging tests like a lymphocentigraphy or an ICG. These tests will help look at the lymphatic system structure and its function. They can show if there is a dysfunction in that system in which the lymph fluid is backed up or not moving through the limb properly. Secondary lymphedema occurs because of the damage or trauma to the lymphatic system. So common causes of the lymphatic system damage may include cancer-related surgery, radiation therapy, traumatic injuries, or parasitic infections. Specific cancer-related surgery, such as those done for tumor removal, require the removal of lymph nodes. The removal of lymph nodes reduces the system's ability to move fluid and then puts people at risk for developing lymphedema. In the case of radiation, it can damage healthy lymph nodes, the radiation can, causing scarring or fibrosis, which can then affect lymphatic flow. For some, lymphedema may never occur despite having surgery or radiation as well, while others may have enough of the damage that the system is overloaded with fluid, causing that buildup. Traumatic injuries like fracturing or breaking a leg and infections can potentially disrupt lymphatic vessels and may cause or may result in lymphatic system impairments and lead to the onset of lymphedema. Obesity is another cause to secondary lymphedema. And how? Well, excess weight, typically considering a BMI of over 50 or morbid obesity, can place excess weight and pressure on the lymphatic system, damaging it or clogging it, which may cause irreversible damage even if the weight is then lost after. Parasitic infections are worldwide the most prevalent cause of damage to the lymphatic system and lead to the form of lymphedema, which we call filariasis. This condition affects people primarily in subtropical areas of Southeast Asia, India, Central America, and Africa. In these cases, a mosquito bite typically injects the larva into the lymphatic system. So this larva matures into an adult worm in the lymphatic vessels, then causing that severe lymphedema and damage. Now, what about the treatment for these two types of lymphedema? Well, generally the treatment is the same with the differences coming more person to person instead of through the type. Complete decongestive therapy or CDT remains the gold standard treatment for both primary and secondary lymphedema and includes manual lymphatic drainage, compression bandaging, compression garments, exercises, and skin cares. Other treatments may include pneumatic compression devices or pumps, deep breathing, and also surgical options. Lymphedema remains a chronic and lifelong condition. Although there is still not a true cure with strong adherence to a program and therapy, lymphedema can be well managed. 
But if you are looking for more treatment options, you can learn in-depth treatment about the best ways to treat lymphedema in my lower body lymphedema rehab program, as well as my breast cancer rehab program. These programs go highly in depth on the best ways to treat and reduce lymphedema. They do include visual demonstrations of each component of treatment, including bonus options and detailed videos with easy to follow handouts and more resources, all organized and combined into one program. It's everything that I use to treat my patients in the clinic, but packaged for someone to move through at their own pace. So you can learn more about these programs on my website, which I will link up above as well as in the description box down below. For more information on lymphedema and lymphedema treatment, be sure to follow along and subscribe to my channel. And I hope you all found this video helpful. We'll see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.